morning and welcome. Happy Friday. You are tuned in and listening to Bat Talk with Sharona. I'm your host. My name is Sharona. As always, I thank you for tuning in. Today's show, fortunately, um, is all pre-recorded. We, in our first hour, hopefully we're going to be bringing you our chat last night from Going for Two with Zach Law, myself and Zach Law, and Mike Waller. We sat down and talked about fantasy football, the big game between the Titans and the Browns, your NFL Week 6 picks, and a little bit of uh, uh, Cleveland Cavaliers and some, some other sports chit-chat. Always fun to, to sit down and talk to Mike and so um, if if that uploaded correctly, I'm looking at the dashboard. Blog Talk always likes to try to mess with us, and I'm looking at the dashboard. We'll see if that um, uploaded correctly. Shout out, by the way, to Robin Monday, who joined me on Wednesday to update us about the Buffalo Bills and their season and what's going on with them. I had a chance uh, in our second hour, we're going to be talking about the security breach by Yahoo, the... Uh, very curious at, at best <laughs> decision by Marissa Mayer to um, roll over and play dead when the government sent them a, an order to uh, basically violate everyone's privacy and, and, and the two discrimination lawsuits that had been filed against her and, and, and Yahoo uh, with Matt Wood in our chopping it up segment. We're going to, we're going to talk about that. And then I had a chance to sit down with Eric Evans from Roll Bama Roll. We talked about the big game this weekend. It's the third Saturday in October, you guys. Always um, always a challenging and fun game. And um, uh, college rivalries are a tradition like no other. So I had a chance to sit down with Eric. And Eric and I talked a little bit about the Bills, too. So uh, you can hear that. That is our final segment. But once again, first up. Uh, my chat with um, Zach Law and Mike Wallert from last night concerning the um, the big game between the Cleveland Browns and the Tennessee Titans, fantasy football. Uh, I, Mike's a big IDP guy. If you haven't played IDP, you definitely should. It's one of the most fun things you'll ever do. Uh, that's a pretty long segment, so we're going to go ahead and, and get started uh, with a, a quick introduction, so stay tuned in. You're listening to Bat Talk with Sharona. <laughs> Good evening, and welcome to Going for Two. This is the only YouTube podcast in human recorded history to feature a male and female host, drinking our way through the important topics of the day, as long as they touch the football world, and not in that way. I am Zach Law, and this is Sharona Super Duper Fragilistic Expialidocious. Tonight, we bring back the people's chant, the MVP of IDP, the something that robs the streaming of streaming, Mike Waller, to talk with us again. Mike, how are you doing? I uh, hear you have a baseball squad that's still playing. You know, I'm going to be uh, incorrigible here because if the Indians <laughs> do happen to win, that'll be two cha- that'll be two championships here in yeah. Cleveland. And I think maybe people are just going to need to either mute me or just completely unfollow <laughs> me because I am just going to be I'm going to turn into that guy. You're allowed. You're completely allowed. You follow the Browns, and we're going to be talking about the Browns in a minute. And um, you know, you're allowed. And I have to say, you know, I wasn't. Um, in my lifetime, I haven't always been the biggest LeBron James fan, but I'm becoming a fan. He, you know, he's he's kind of turning into the to the old man, and he just kind sure. of says and does the right thing, and mm-hmm. you never hear about him at not late at night, and you know, it's just he's I don't know. Unless he does a really good job of paying people off not to spread things around about him, you don't really hear much about him. So yeah. he brought a title. I don't care who he supports or what he, what he, who he supports, what he does during the national anthem. Couldn't care less. We are raising a championship banner in Cleveland. So all is all is well. 
Well, he does seem to be good in the community too, and you know he's giving back and and mm-hmm. doing doing those those things too, and that's you know I like to see guys do that. Yeah, always a good thing. And he clearly should have been nominated for an Academy Award for his work on Trainwreck because that's uh, it's like my favorite part of the movie. <laughs> Quality stuff. So we have to say hello. We haven't said hello officially to Sharona. I hear you're drinking wine tonight. Is it uh, National Thursday Night Wine Night? I am. I almost. In fact, I'll have to tweet out the beer. I've got a big, huge. It's called um, Arrogant Bastard, I think. Hmm. Big ale. Um, but uh, I just wasn't up to it. So I'm drinking a red blend. It's a Three Thieves red blend. It's nice. It's, it's a nice sipping wine and drinking it in my love the wine you're with stemless wine glass clearly and mike's drinking some quality lake erie water i'm drinking water yes this guy is professional it's a game night by the way there's actually a game happening <laughs> right chargers, behind me chargers broncos <laughs> um i got cj anderson in a couple of leagues and it's like almost this is his last shot so we'll see <laughs> uh but we do apologize Mike, I know of um, all our potential guests. You understand our need to talk about a rare Titans win uh, and whether it may uh, continue not to be rare. So, first of all, hashtag erotic smash mouth is real. DeMarco <laughs> Murray is beast. And um, I only, you know, since I watched kind of the Sunday ticket, I have a friend who got the NFL pass, but we just watched the red zone. I mean, he could have just gotten yeah. the red zone. So the Titans not in the red zone a ton, so I didn't get to see the game. So I saw like the 10 minute version of it, but basically Marcus Mario didn't turn the ball over, and every time he ran, he ran out of bounds because he's not that he's fast, but he's not really elusive in the open field. And he completed passes of over 20 yards. Sure, and I said like eight good things about the Titans in a row. Is there something wrong? <laughs> Multiple experience. I don't know. Is this, do you believe this? Do you are you are you with this, or is this, or is this just mean the Dolphins are this bad? Are you asking me? Yeah, well, we'll start well, with you. Different. Well, the Dolphins are bad. Um, let's get that out of the way. The, the Dolphins are a bad football team. Um, their defense is worse than I expected. Um, I really thought that their defense was going to be pretty good, and they sort of looked good in the preseason and like maybe in that first game or at least early on. In the, but, no, they're it's not good. They're not good. Um, the You know, the big thing – the time, um, of course, Marcus Marriott is only in his second year. People need to remember that, and he's struggling, had been struggling, just like a lot of young quarterbacks um, in their second year starting, whether they're, you know, true sophomores or just like Tyrod Taylor in his second year starting. And um, what was important for the Titans is that they – Overall, protected him very well. He protected the football. They jumped up and got an early lead, and in the second half, their defense a little bit better and really kind of tee up on Ryan Tannehill and his bad offensive line. And so that I think that, in a nutshell, is why they won. Well, I, I've been trying the streaming defense thing, and I, of course, like many people, uh, the second time this year, uh, you know, streamed the Dolphins' defense yep. because Jennifer <laughs> Eakins wouldn't, uh, you know, outbid me for them this week. And luckily, I got the punt return touchdown. It was yeah. fine that the Titans cut their put their special teams coach, and then they gave another punt return touchdown. Although that was a really good punt return. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the little dude in Texas Tech, he uh, he put it together. Um, and the defense, actually, the Titans' defense has been really good. And you had three guys with two sacks since the last time that happened, you know? I'm Make streaming the this. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm streaming the Titans' defense this week. Might may not want to hear that, but. <laughs> hey, if they're going to win you a game or make you some money, I am I am all for it. I think they were my uh, they were my top choice in my in my uh, streaming article this week. So. I can't, uh, you know, when it comes to fantasy, I can't, I, I have to check my, my allegiances at the door. And this season, it's been very easy to do that. Yeah, so after, you know, the Dolphins, the Titans get the team that the Dolphins should have lost to a few weeks ago. Uh, sorry, Mike, the Cleveland Browns. Mm-hmm. 
let's set the stage a little bit for the Cleveland Browns. Here's what's happening to them just this year. They passed on Carson Wentz at two and traded down like um, a drunken person on a fire sale at a dynasty league to get 75 draft picks, which all made the team. Uh, five quarterbacks have played for them, which is crazy. I know they have a quarterback wide receiver guy, but still they would have had four. Um, Cavs, of course, won the title. You got a baseball guy who's a football guy running the show. And then week five, of course, was the start of the Patriots' vengeance tour. And uh, <laughs> we'll see, because rebuilding seems to work better in baseball just because in baseball you can trade for a lot of minor leaguers and you have, you know, tons of draft picks. But I do, before we kind of get into the game, uh, I feel like we need to pour one out. And maybe this will be a weekly feature. Pour one out for Tablet Jesus, Charlie Whitehurst. Played for the Browns for like for a, few, for a quarter or two, and then he quarters. got cut for Kevin Hogan, who was drafted by the Chiefs and let go, and who could be quarterback number six. So, Tablet Jesus, you done good. He had a heck of a career. I'm pretty sure he was a rookie the same year as Vince Young, maybe a year before. Hey, the Chargers are about to score. And, I'm kind of um, surprised. I set a lot of my Charger players tonight. I have to say, I mean, I know things have been bad for the Browns, so they're expected to be brown. I have a coworker who's a Chargers fan. I just mentioned the team to him, and he just, like, put his head in his hands. Because they showed in the NFL that teams in the league that have had the lead for the most amount of time this year, the Chargers are number one. <laughs> and they've lost just that, all that, but that, one, that, two, two, two. Mm-hmm. Ugh. That pesky fourth quarter that gets in the way. Yeah, their fourth quarters are n- not pretty. If they play 50 minutes, they tip. They're they're undefeated. It's like 57 in some cases. Yeah, but, yeah. So this weekend, Nashville, I will be at the game. My dad's already traumatized and given up his ticket, so I will be at the game with my mom. So somebody's coming out of this game with a winning streak. Either the Browns and, win their third in a row against the Titans, or the Titans win their second in a row. So, how are we feeling about this? I mean, I think I know how Mike feels about his team, but how do you feel about your team this week? Well, I think I saw you say something that you think the, the Titans are going to lose, um, or that the Browns are going to win. I think the Browns are going to lose, so we might have to have some sort of reverse, reverse wager – where I think the Titans are going to win and you think the Browns are going to lose. So, no, I, I, I don't see – honestly, I don't see the Browns winning this game. I, I, I don't. Um, starting with, with the offense, outside of Terrell Pryor, there's not really – they don't really have a whole lot of playmakers. Gary Barnage, uh, who was last season's big offensive superstar, is no longer that as he's been basically called in. As, uh, as another tackle because the right side of our offensive line has been a patchwork um, since the powers that be decided to let Mitchell Schwartz go. And so you've had guys uh, rotating in and out. John Greco has been playing center. Uh, Alvin Bailey and, and Austin Pastor have been playing the right side and getting abused. Um, Cody Kessler is going to be starting quarterback, which I don't have a problem with because I don't get where people are saying Josh McCown gives the Browns the best chance to win because every time Josh McCown gets kind of close to maybe winning, he throws a really bad pass and costs us the game. Um, the last game he played against Baltimore, he threw into quadruple coverage and, uh, and threw an interception. So um, I know Tennessee has a really good defense. Um, a, a, a much improved run defense, so I mm-hmm. could see them selling out to stop Isaiah Crowell, much like the Patriots did last week. Um, Brian Arakpo is uh, getting sacks again. Derek Morgan is good at the rush, and uh, and and Jarrell Casey is going to he's going to do very terrible things to the left side of our defensive <laughs> line because we lost Joel Batonio and our starting center really stinks. So Joel, I, I see Joe Thomas. If he plays, he's probably going to be focusing on Rockbo, leaving, like I said, Darrell Casey to just go ham. And I could see Casey getting multi, uh, having a multi sack game. Yeah, I'm, so, I'm excited for him this weekend. I, I don't think the secondary is going to be tested. Um, 
as much. You know, Jason McCourty has been improved. The safety play has been up and down. I, I, I don't see a very, you know, I, I can see Mariota having a rushing touchdown. Uh, DeMarco Murray is, I think is going to have a big game. So I think Tennessee is going to win this one. I think it's going to probably be, if I were to say a score, I'm probably going to say 24, maybe 14. Okay. No Ray Horton revenge game. No Ray Horton revenge game. I, I don't see it. We just don't. There's just not. I don't know. There's it's not enough. I mean, there's a few guys. There's a there's a few guys that that are that are playing good football, but Carl Nassib is is a little dinged up. And you guys, you also have a good offensive line. Um, you have really you have two really good tackles. So I I, I don't see them. Uh, providing much much resistance in the way of uh, of getting in the way of a, of a Titans win. Yeah. Well, who's the punt returner for the Browns? Just, you know, could it be through the room? <laughs> Gabriel, who do they have? Do they have no. I feel like they had four no. little little receivers for a while. <laughs> um, Andrew Hawkins. I, 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 yeah, I think Hawkins. maybe Hawkins is returning, but no. Gabriel, I think, is, yeah, he's no longer on. the, the Falcons, I think, yeah. I was, yeah, I was yeah. off on that. Yep. So, I I will probably be once kickoff starts. I'll probably be outside doing yard work until the Indians game comes oh. on. <laughs> <laughs> and and the thing is, I knew what the season was going to be. It's not like I'm being disappointed. I came in with absolutely no expectations. I even thought the Browns weren't going to win a game. So, this is pretty much going exactly as I planned, or as I thought it was going to go. Um, injuries are coming a little quicker, um, but the season is going exactly as, as I kind of thought it was going to go. So in terms of fantasy, is it a good idea to keep Crowell on the, on the bench after his bad performance last week? I think you could still play Crowell. I mean, he's still one of the NFL's leading rushers, and he's still going to see – I think he's still going to see a ton of carries for him to be – to be useful in fantasy. So I think you still have to start them unless you have really good options at running back. Um, I would still start Terrell Pryor. Um, if the Browns can kind of move him along and get him on Parrish Cox's side of the field, then I think uh, they can take advantage of that matchup. So I still think Pryor is, it, it can be is startable. I'm still playing Gary Barnage in, in Scotty Fishbowl because uh, my tight end situation is, is like that. Yeah, that's that's a that's a rough league. I'm, I think I lost, but I'm still in the top hundred. But I'm still looking at my team and just being like, this is not a sustainable team, and I, I <laughs> don't know what to expect for the rest of the season. Okay, when, and, and, and I think I lost out on I, I bid forty bucks on on Cameron Meredith, and I got beat out on my bid. Yeah, I bid on him too. That was getting ready, but I didn't bid that much. I didn't have that much for one thing. I'm pretty yeah. sure because I, I didn't get email. And I don't know who got him. I need to go look. But I think I only bid like five bucks. So it was like, okay. Yeah, I think I spent like seventy-seven bucks on Dak Prescott week one because my quarterback three or even quarter. I think my quarterback two was Lane Gabbard. So that was money well spent. Yeah, all those Lane Gabbard spent a lot on Hoyer. Going oh. down the turlet. Yeah, I had to spend a lot on Hoyer because I think Palmer was in danger of missing, and my third quarterback is Jared Goff, so that tells you right there what my quarterback situation. Although Tyrod Taylor, I do have I've got Taylor and and Palmer, but I had to get another quarterback, and I think I spent quite a bit on on getting Hoyer. Yeah, we all took a took a ride in the Goff train this year. Yeah, I'm actually, it's, it's weird, like with the Scott Fishbowl, I started, I was winning these low-scoring games, and then last week I got like 190. I beat Liz Loza of Yahoo, ha-ha, in your face. <laughs> and in the ladies' division, too, the Jennifer Anson division. Uh, so it's, it's, it's going okay. Um, yeah, but the, it, it's almost like in the Scott Fishbowl, it's not quite like a best ball, but it sort of is because there's like nothing on the yeah. waiver wire. There's a, there's a little bit. There's a little like, bit. There's, I mean, I think Tyrell Williams and Dak were the you know two guys I spent money on. And I have like ten bucks left for the rest of the year, but that's that's life uh, in the fast lane, as they say. So this is yep. something random. I don't know if 
too, you have like NFL Network, like on demand, but they have those little 10 minute versions of the game. Mm -hmm. I watch, I try to watch them all every week and I don't quite make it through, but one of my favorite parts is how they show only 10 minutes of the game. They show maybe 20 plays total. And they, every week with the Titans, they show a five yard Mark Mariani punt return every time. (laughs) And I just love seeing that. Hey, he's not making mistakes, right? Well, right. I, mean, I was trying to talk about uh, Zach likes to hate. Right. It was like, what, we're only even 20 minutes in, and the first hater comment. Huh? Yes. Impressive. <laughs> I've done well tonight. I've done good. You laugh, but I'll never forget. You know, I mean, they've had some really terrible returners. Well, since his Pro Bowl year, I think maybe they had one return touchdown. But no one returns kickoffs anymore, so that kind of ruins it. Poor Mariana. I mean, he was a seventh-round rookie, pro bowler, and then they moved the kickoffs back up five yards, and the next year he went from, like, 60 kick returns to, like, 20. I mean, there's not much you're going to be able to do do with that. So, Sharona, are you, are you doing okay after your loss in the League of Laws last week? We got that, was a, just this week. that was a tough this loss. Was a, I'm I, I felt that one. That was hard. But I'm still three and two, over five hundred. Um, I only uh, well, I, just, I don't really kind of count my MFLs. I think I placed what fourth in our in MFL twenty five, and I don't I haven't had a chance to look at our um, going for two auction league, and I won everywhere else except one except that Yahoo league, and that one I got spanked hard in in it. So. And I was I'm doing actually, so well. That was hard. <laughs> I'm actually pretty sure in the League of Laws, because week one when I beat you, I scored 200. I, like, led the league in points. And you were, like, third. And I beat no, you by like, 80. I'm scoring a lot of points. And then we lost to Chuck this week, my friend Chuck, who I beat two weeks ago. I think he led the league in scoring. I, this is random fantasy nonsense, but, like, in the past three weeks in the League of Laws, I've scored 121.62, 121.82, and 121.92. Like, it's almost impossible to be that consistently mediocre. But I <laughs> have managed to win two out of those three in, like, two-point victories. But this week at, like, 12.55, I was trying to decide, do I start Martellus Bennett or Rob Gronkowski? Oh, no. And I usually spit the bit and blow this, and I start Bennett. And, like, on that first drive, oh. Gronk had, like, two big catches. I'm like, God, what a dumbass. I really <laughs> deserved both of them, to be honest. I started Crowell, who did nothing. But when he scored three touchdowns, I was like, yeah, okay, this is fun, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I started him in DFS. And fan, I did FanDuel and DraftKings. I haven't had a chance. I need to go and check. Um, I won two weeks in a row in FanDuel. Nice, yeah. In one of in one of my leagues, in in you know how in my fantasy league it'll it'll tell you, oh, you shouldn't have started this guy, and they yeah. give you the, the the red arrows down and the green arrows up, and yeah, one of my leagues I had way too many green arrows pointing up on my bench, so not a not a good time. The first time I decide to bench Theo Riddick, mm. and uh, oh. I ended up losing, so. Well, you know, what are you going to do? I've in one of my leagues, and I've it's a league I'm struggling in. Like I have a lot of young wide receivers, like Nuke and Amari Cooper, and um, who else? I think I have Allen Robinson in that league, and I have old ass Larry Fitz, and I've got old ass Larry Fitzgerald, and of course I'm playing the younger guys, and they're sucking it up. And finally, I'm like, quit being stupid, play. Play Larry, play Larry, and so because yeah. I mean, like he's scoring a buttload of points, and so I ain't sitting Larry no more. Yeah, I'm pretty sure half yeah, of my scoring. Yeah, I'm like I have Jamison Crowder. Let me tell you guys, I, I was. I mean, I'm return touchdown. I've been trying to. I've been trying to trade for because my running back situation is. <laughs> I've been trying to trade. I think everybody says. Like last week, I started C.J. Anderson, Frank Gore, and Crowell. And I think between the three of them, they scored like 15 points. I mean, it was just running back is death this year. But uh, this is my Quasimodo quad. That's what I'm finishing the evening on before we get to football. Look at this. I mean, it, it, it just makes sure there's dark. That is dark. 
All right. I've got um, DeAndre. Oh, 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 Odell Beckham Jr. No. Yeah, right? I mean, I've got um, DeAndre Hopkins, Odell Beckham Jr., and Valerie Fitzgerald's now in my lineup. Uh, Amari Cooper, Jamison Crowder, and I have picked up Tyrell Williams as well. Now, wasn't Odell Beckham making up with the kicking net, like the feel-good moment yeah. of the weekend? I mean, that was good stuff. Yeah. Because this is like the third or fourth game That's of lifetime year. television. Everybody Uh-oh. was like... Uh-oh. Zach Brown, Zach Brown didn't practice today? Yeah, watch yourself. I oh, he did. He did. He returned to practice today. Never mind. Okay. Mike, you're doing the strong work. That Wednesday's practice. Because, like, IDP is just so... It's so hard to keep track of. Like, guys get hurt all the time. You get demoted. And then you get position switches. Just, you know, Whoa, crazy. I went big last week. I won 25 bucks last week. Catch money, see? You can buy, like, case of wine, right? Two bucks, Chuck. Yeah, it, it can be... It can be frustrating because, you know, people are announced as starters, but they're starters in name only, okay. where they only play in maybe 10 or 15 snaps because they're not involved in the sub packages. They're not involved in nickel. They're only involved in base. And maybe a team only runs base maybe 10% of the game, and that renders him useless. So it, it, it can definitely be, yeah, definitely hard to keep up um, if if you get frustrated, yeah, if you get frustrated easily, um, but it's the only way I really know how to play. So I have, you know, I try to, I, you know, I'm always trying to keep up with everything as, as much as, as possible, trying to delve into to snaps and see what people are doing. You know, the, the coaches film really helps on the, uh, on the game pass also kind of seeing where, where people are lining up and seeing when people are, are leaving the field. So um, trying to watch that as well. Yeah, kind of the mix and match on on safeties and like I had Honey Badger and I was feeling good about it and then like he's playing a deep safety I'm like come on mm-hmm. man get Honey Badger in there like you really need yep. you want a safety you want that in the box guy you don't want the free safety guy yeah. basically well, unless you're on a bad bad football team yeah the the free safety is basically man in the backfield and yeah you definitely want the the strong um, the Rashad Jones types, the the Landon Collins types that are going to play, you know, near the line of scrimmage, are going to play in the box, and uh, that are just going to, you know, make those uh, those big hits. And you have to know guys like the best 2013 draft pick by the Tennessee Titans, Damian Stafford, still starting a tr- strong safety, right? I think, although Cersei might play this week, right? Cersei's hurt. Yeah, I haven't seen the latest on him. Um, Kevin Bayard is is playing and playing well, and um, but Cersei's the free safety, right? Yeah. Pretty I always sure. thought I always thought Cersei played strong. Okay, maybe it's wrong. Let me look. Yeah, I'm on my radar sometimes, but now Stafford has been eh, kind of meh. You know, he'll produce. Uh, yeah, you know, I think he's yeah he's got double digit points in his last two, but he's been aided by a, he was aided by an interception last week. Let's see here. Yeah, he's, that, he's a strong safety. One thing Rashad, that, that's right. They picked up Rashad Johnson. He's the, one of the, he's the other free safety. One thing that's kept people away from like playing IDP is the fact that like tackles are just whatever the team score does. I've heard the league's going to try to do something more official. Have you heard anything about that? Or is that still yeah, like the, Go for the local scoring guys who give lots of assists. Yeah, I think that's probably going to change. I think they're going to they're they're monitoring that a little bit better. Um, they're also updating um, MFL's updating also. So I think they're really trying to take a look and see, you know, if someone, you know, I think there was a, an instance a, co- a week or two ago where someone got credited for a tackle they weren't even near the play. And uh, so they, they updated the scoring and, and gave the proper credit to, to who should have received the, you know, who should have gotten the tackle. So I, I think it should become a little bit more of an official stat um, and not just left up to a, a stat guy or, a, you know, a scorekeeper um, up in the, you know, up in the press box. So um, it might mean if it's a close game that you have to sweat it out a little bit more, but, 
I think it, I think within I think at least you need to be accurate with with the stats. You know, they do it for the offensive guys. Um, I think they should also do it with the defensive guys too. Make things a little bit more official. So like any time Ray Lewis was in ten feet of a pile, he got credit for a tackle. He got credit for a tackle. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> like some of those really high tackle guys just what was it, Zach Thomas back in the day? Like he had two hundred tackles in a year. It was it was something else. Luke Keekley, I think, is one of the very few guys that is credited for the tackles that he makes. I mean, he just seems to be everywhere, no matter where the ball is. He just seems to be there. So just taking one kind of random Titans player. So Avery Williamson, do you think he's hashtag good? Is he uh, a good IDT guy? And is he someone that they should just – because he's about due for an extension if that's going to happen. Well, I mean, for, for IDP, obviously, tackles are king, so they don't necessarily equal a, a great defender. But I think for, for IDP purposes, Williamson has been really good this year. Um, he doesn't leave the field. Um, you know, 24 solos on the year, I think 36 total tackles. So, um, you know, that's really all you could ask for out of, a, you know, out of someone like that. So, you know, I think he makes a pretty decent second or third linebacker if you're playing in, in, you know, deeper leagues or leagues where you're starting at least two or or more linebackers. So um, I think he's had three games of, of more than 11 fantasy points. Like I said, he's, he's, he gets the tackles and he wears the the communication device and and doesn't leave the field, which is really all that you're, you're looking for out of, out of your linebackers. Wow. Cameron Meredith went for 85 bucks in Let's see. Um, he's, this guy's probably Dynasty Nicholas Lombardi from Dynasty Nerds paid 85. I was trying to see. It's kind of hard to sort through and and see who who got what. But yeah, that's a, that's some cashola. Do we all have like free agent bucks kind of? I don't know strategies because it, it seems like. In Scott Fishbowl is the only league I ever did that had that. People were just dying to just throw their money away right away. Like last year, James Jones went for a hundred bucks, like in week one, and I got rid of most of my money. Do you like to hold on to it, or you know, is it really a dependent situation? I always try to hold on to it, but I don't do a very good job of it. Um, like this year, I was gonna be like, all right, losing all my fab cost me last year because I didn't have any to get a quarterback because I got to the playoffs and I couldn't pick up a quarterback because Andy Dalton, I lost Andy Dalton and Tony Romo was my other quarterback and I was out of fab dollars. So I'm like, all right, well, and I can't, and we can't, and our free and our first come first serve waivers cost a dollar. So you can't wow. make just free moves. So if you make a move that costs a dollar. So I'm like, well, can we at least remove the dollar for the first come first serve waivers? And, you know, it still gives you the strategy because if you want the big name free agent, you have to still put in the money for it. Yeah. So I think it got shot down. But this year I thought I'm like, all right, you know what? I'm not going to, I'm not going to go nuts. And here we are in week six and I have $2 left from my $100 budget. <laughs> Yeah, that's what's, what's and, weird. Yeah. I added, I wanted to put free agent bucks in the uh, Yahoo League that we started, the League of Laws, which was supposed to have more laws. It only has two. Uh, but the the highest players that have been bid on so far this year, I think we have maybe because we have big benches, but so far it's been team defenses that have been the highest. I actually bid 12 bucks. I think I bid 12 on Cameron Meredith and I bid like 11 on Devontae Booker and probably the second I bid was like two, but I still have like 54 bucks and I have the least amount of dollars. It's, it's really weird because in every other league that I've heard of free agent bucks, people spend their money and let it go. And you're kind of like, well, maybe I'm hoping for a Tim Hightower kind of situation uh, to come up later. I, um, somebody who can help. I, um, I went a little bit nuts at the beginning of the year. Um, like at the beginning of the year, I grabbed uh, Tyrell Williams for fifteen dollars. I got Leonard Williams for fifteen dollars. Um, I wasted my money on Justin March, and I got Zach Brown for fifteen bucks. Um, picked up Quincy and Nunwa for ten. Dropped the Nunwa, picked Terrell Pryor for ten, and then that's when I realized, 
oh no, I am almost broke. <laughs> so, um, and the bye weeks haven't really hit and I've got, I got, and I, and I need to save my money because I've got two safeties that have the same bye week. So I basically have to kind of save those final $2 to pick up two defensive backs or two safeties. But other than that, I just got to basically hope no one gets hurt because if anybody gets hurt, I'm screwed, especially quarterback. Uh, Cause I think my quarterbacks are Ryan and Palmer. So I've already gotten dealt with a concussion with Palmer. So um, I just basically need to pray again that everybody stays healthy because I won't be able to pick anybody up. And like, and I said last year, to, I left a message on my board. I said, Hey, if you guys lose to me without a quarterback, then I, I don't know what to, you, you guys suck or something <laughs> along those lines. <laughs> yeah. What well, is different being in this league? Because I'm used to being in a league where you had to roster three quarterbacks. So no quarterbacks were available. And mm-hmm. this week, Blake Bortles and Sharona got rid of Palmer. You get a concussion, Sharona cut your ass. What? <laughs> there are quarterbacks available. So I picked up Blake Bortles and oh. I don't know. Everybody's hating on him, but hey, he's scored two touchdowns a week except for one. He's not getting the points de garbage like he got last year. Yeah, I was about to say he's Mr. Garbage time. You know, let the let Jacksonville loot, you know get down early, and you can count on those third and fourth quarter long bombs to to Allen Robinson and Hearns. Yeah, that is true. Well, Sharona, I was going to make the transition to uh, talk about your uh, college squad because you've had some like heart attacks over them over the past two Lord weeks. Lord have mercy. But I feel like you you have one more uh, NFL bit to cover. Oh yeah, you we'll do, do the picks. We'll do picks real quick. Who, uh, right now, I think Sharona's like watching the game like on TV right now. It's right now. It's <laughs> Chargers seven, Broncos nothing uh, in hmm. quarter two. They've early in the second quarter. Who you got tonight? Broncos or Chargers? Uh, I, go, I, mean, I would have said Broncos. I go hashtag yeah. quarterback wins and Trevor Simeon. Okay, so you're going to go Everybody's with... probably annoyed because they still are like, man, I have to remember how to spell that guy's name, seriously? Right, I know. I've got, I have like three shares of him, but he's on my bench. I'm not taking uh, that chance. Um, CJ no, Anderson, like, Demarius Thomas, and Emmanuel Sanders in one league, so wow. that's not going well. I don't have, he's the only Broncos skill player that, that I have anywhere. Unless I have him in some MFL somewhere, but um, I do have several Chargers, including um, Tyrell Williams, who we mentioned before, and I've got like four, maybe five shares of Travis Benjamin. Um, but the I think the touchdown was by the uh, Hen, Hun, Henry Hunter, Hunter Henry, Henry. yeah. Um, Everybody was, needs a hungry hunter. It was a popular pick. Dexter McCluster just got a catch. Woohoo! Ex Titans baby. You go, hate hate hard, Zach. Hate hard. Okay, we're gonna run through these real quick so we don't spend a whole lot of time on it. But but what we get we get them in, and I'll just shout out you guys so you can pick real quick. Eagles, Redskins, Mike. Eagles. All right, Zach. Fly Eagles, fly. Fly Eagles fly. Is there any chance the Redskins can beat the Eagles? Well, there's always a chance, but I, I like the Eagles. They're playing good football. Yeah, I, th- I think they are too. Uh, St- uh, Steelers, Dolphins. I'll start with you this time, Zach. Who you got? Despite the fact that Cecil Lamby and Simon Bloom are trying to like pretend that their team's going to suck this week, I think there's no way. It's all Steelers. Steelers. Okay, what about you, Mike? Dolphins. Woo! Because because like I hate it. Pittsburgh. Okay. I, I like <laughs> no, it. I'm, I'm from Pittsburgh, but I, I understand the feeling. I'm down yeah. with it. I'm down with it. We talked about Browns Titans. I we could didn't. have gone that way. We Jordan Norwood's about... leading and receiving with nine yards? Oh, we talked about Browns Titans. We're not going to talk about that. Jaguars, Bears, Mike, who you got? Uh, I'm going to go with the Bears just because I uh, picked them as my defensive streamer. Uh, I'm streaming them too. Bears. Yeah, I'm streaming them too. Zach, who you got? The Bears. Let's go, Brian. Bears. We're time. Yeah, yeah I'm Cutler, just... sitting the bench, baby. Eight figures bench. He, he's not okay. He's okay with that. Since I had the Vikings defense everywhere, I'm streaming Bears in one league and Titans in another league. Bengals, Patriots. Uh, Zach, I'll start with you this time. 
Patriots are just rolling. Can we get four touchdowns this week for Martellus Bennett? Roll, roll, roll. Mm. Mike, you agree? Yeah, Patriots this week. Yeah, yeah the Bengals are overrated. Um, 49ers, Bills, who, who do we have here? Mike, I'll start with you. I'm going to go with the Buffalo Bills and Shady McCoy. Ty God Taylor. Uh, Zach, what about you? Uh, could we bring back, uh, like, WrestleMania or something? I don't want to see Rex Ryan versus Connor Kaepernick at the 50-yard line for the <laughs> oh, game yeah. determines who wins because that's the one. But the Bills, the Bills are weird. That could be four in a row for the Bills. Hey. Hey. Watch out, street free agent. Your team's on Maybe they did fire the right guy. Yeah. So is it – so is it unanimous? Is it all Bills? I think so. All right. Ravens, Giants, Zach? Oh, my gosh. Uh, let's see. So if a team fires a coach, that means they're going to be better. I don't know what to put the Giants offense. So, oh, but it hurts yeah. me to pick the Ravens. Giants. I'll pick the Ravens. Okay. Mike, do you agree? I am going to go with the Giants at home. Okay. All right. I, the Giants suck. I, I and the Ravens are overrated, but I'm I'm going to pick the Ravens. So um, it'll, it'll be very interesting to see how this game. Um, I never got the Mark Tristan love. We talked about that last night. I did a podcast with the the Gridiron Gals, and it was fun. And we talked about that. And Rita, the NFL chick, is a huge Ravens fan. And um, yeah, so I guess. Sorry. Yeah. So uh, Rams, Lions, Zach, can Jeff Fisher beat the lion, the lowly Lions? It's funny, the Rams and the Lions are like the two teams that have the most ex Titans combined, so it's not surprising they stink. So let's let's see Jeff Fisher head back with his pink sunglasses back to the ground. It's gonna be Lions. I shouldn't be surprised that the game is ten nothing Chargers. I mean they're always winning uh, before the fourth was, quarter. Yeah. Oh it hasn't mine hasn't updated yet. The okay. guy didn't choke the field goal attempt like last week. Mike, who do you have? Rams, Lions? Uh, I like the Lions at home. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to pick the Lions too. And um, I actually, uh, the other streaming option that because I do literally have the Vikings defense everywhere, uh, I'm streaming the Lions in one league too because of the Rams, their offensive issues and the quarterback issues there. Panthers Saints, boy, this is going to be some bad, bad football. Mike, who do you have here? Boy, the uh, I think I'm going to go with the Saints in the dome. The Panthers defense just is icky, not good at all. I don't I don't know what happened between last year and now, but uh, it's just it's just not good. Um, I think it's going to be a shootout, but I think the Saints win it. Yeah. Okay, Zach. What about you? Who do you have? I'll just go crazy and say Cam's coming back. <clears throat> Make it happen. Panthers time, although, yeah, to have two rookie cornerbacks starting, they're like, hey, we don't. Mike Griffin, Mike Griffin. Oh, yeah, we forgot to mention the whole Mike Griffin. I didn't realize that they signed him. Yeah, they they signed uh, Finnegan last year, and I was kind of hoping that Finnegan, because he was that just feisty guy with the Titans, for him to win a Super Bowl ring in that last year sadly didn't happen. And uh, Griffin probably isn't going to win one either. So, yeah. It's, I think the score could ser- yeah, I think the score seriously could be like fifty three to forty nine. Yeah. Because the Saints is just also they're also a really a historical bad defense this year too. Yeah, both of these defenses are bad. Um I, I'll go with the Panthers just because I think they're D one, but these both of these teams are, are really, really, really bad. Chiefs Raiders, I think surprisingly this is going to be a good game. I, who do you have in this one? Uh, I think I'm going to go with the Chiefs in this one. They got Jamal Charles coming back. Um, Raiders are kind of meh on defense. And I don't know, just something about the Chiefs. I, I Again, I think I picked them as a streamer, so I got to go with my streaming picks. What about you, Zach? Who do you have? Well, I spent some years in Kansas City, so I'll go with the Chiefs okay. uh, against the Raiders. Oddly, the only team who couldn't do anything against the Raiders defense, Tennessee Titans. Titans, yeah. I'm going to go <laughs> – yeah, I'm going to go with the the Chiefs, too, make it unanimous. Um, I think that they're – and uh, I am a huge Alex Smith fan, and so I'm playing – he's one of my quarterbacks in the Scotty Fishbowl, and I'm happy to have him back. I miss you, boo. All right, so mm-hmm. Cowboys, Packers. Uh, Mike, who do you like in this one? Packers. I think this is the week that Ezekiel Elliott gets bottled up. Okay, all right. Zach, do you agree? 
It's a weird year. The Packers are actually winning on on defense. Uh, maybe Des Bryant gets his revenge for the catch game, but I still think, you know, I almost think it's worth it for the Cowboys to pay him eight figures a year to wear the hoodie with no sleeves combination on the sidelines. That's pretty awesome. But <laughs> I'll go Packers. I'm picking the Cowboys in this one. I I think that um, like Packers, Cowboys. the Cowboys um, are playing very well. They're pay, they're playing. Um, fairly disciplined football, Zach. Uh, Zach. Mm-hmm. Dak is very protective of the football. Ezekiel Elliott, who I thankfully own in one league, is um, really starting to come on. And I also own some Cole Beasley shares. Woo, woo, woo. So I'm happy about that. And the Packers' offense stinks. It's awful. It's terrible. I'm picking the, the Cowboys. All right, Falcons, Seahawks. Can the Falcons, who are – doing pretty well. Can they go into Seattle and beat the Seahawks, Zach? Yeah, they, they've actually done some some good things. Nobody picked them to win last week. And it was all that Tevin Coleman. He's got the sickle cell trade. They thought he was going to play. Then he ended up having like 700 yards of offense. So I think this is the week that Seattle, especially coming off a of bye week and at home, and you're going to watch all those fans wearing those ugly – God awful green jerseys you're gonna see on Thursday night <laughs> color rush. They're gonna have a good time. Kristen Michael's gonna, you know, eat all that good stuff. All right, so I assume you're picking the Seahawks. Yes. Okay. Mike? Yeah, I'm going with the Seahawks. Um I think the one thing I'll definitely be interested, um it's been noted and reported that Richard Sherman is going to be shadowing this week. So he oh. will be covering Julio Jones, Julio Jones for the majority of the game. So I'm that will definitely be, that. yeah, it'll be a definitely a, an interesting matchup to, uh, to watch. Yeah. Um, Seahawks run defense is, is still really good. And, uh, you know, the, it's just a loud place and just a tough place to win. Yeah, so um, I'm going to go Seahawks. Yeah, I'll make it unanimous. I think the Seahawks are going to win too. And it is legitimately one of the few places left that you do have a home field advantage like that. I completely agree. Speaking of bad football, Colts, Texans, woof, woof, woof. Mike, who do you have in this one? Uh, I'm going to go with the Texans. I think uh, I think this is going to be a good Lamar Miller week, and I think it's going to be a good week for the Texans offense, uh, for Hopkins and Miller. I think they kind of get things going against Indianapolis. Indianapolis doesn't have much of a pass rush, uh, one of the lowest pressure rates in the league. Um I don't think Fonte Davis has been all that great this year either, so I think this is definitely a week that Houston's offense will uh, uh, will come and it, it come to play this week. Zach, yeah, Davian Clown is actually playing pretty well, and at home they'll they'll be much better. When they play really good teams, they suck, and against the AFC South, they they could just go six and zero and probably take the division. So we'll get that, and the Lamar Miller touchdown drought will come to an end. Mm-hmm. I hear what y'all are saying, and I, it makes so much sense, but I'm going to pick the Colts because I want it to happen, it, even though they <laughs> suck hard. And um, But Andrew Luck is still Andrew Luck, and I'm, I, I still believe, hopefully, please do it. Please, Andy, help me out here. All right, final game of the week, Jets, Cardinals. Um, how, many, how many points are going to be scored in this one, Mike? Uh, I think the Cardinals are going to are going to win this one, and I think they're going to – I think they're just going to blow the doors off the Jets. I think it's, uh, I don't know, I think the Cardinals win by more than double digits. I was so surprised, shocked, but happy that I was able to pick up John Brown off of waivers. Jeez, and I'm playing what kind of league are you in? I know, right? It's weird. I was like, is he out there? Okay, I'll see. because who did I have? I had somebody that went on IR. It might have been uh, Charles Sims. And so, yeah, Zach, who do you have? I think Carson Palmer uh, will do just fine. Uh Eric Decker, who everybody was like, draft him. And, of course, he gets hurt this year after having, like, <laughs> 10 years in a row of consistent play. He is ruined for uh, Fitz Magic. I think it's going to be Cardinals. And, hey, Marcus Golden, uh, Missouri product right there, starting to starting to play real well for them. I'll make it unanimous. Yep. Yeah, you. Yeah. All right. That's it for the week. I'm actually happy that Trevor Simeon just threw an incomplete pass for Demarius Thomas just to prove that he's on the field. So the leading okay. receiver for the Denver Broncos is Jordan Norwood. Oh wow! Woo! <laughs> I think uh, three catches, twenty-one yards, three targets. 
Eight yards well, running they, for C.J. Anderson. They got a first down, but it's 11 plays for the Denver Broncos and 11 carries for Melvin Gordon so far. And Melvin Gordon, 19 yards. It's touchdown, but he, if you take away his long of seven, <laughs> he's 10 for 12. <laughs> so he might not be hashtag good. Uh-huh. We're gonna talk. We're gonna talk about the the emotional roller coaster happening uh, for Sharona the last two weeks because we weren't able to do a show last week and what now? missed out on the crazy Tennessee Georgia finish. Wow. Can you possibly cover that experience? Because Georgia scored a touchdown with ten seconds to go. Yes. And then Tennessee got a hail mary in the last play. <laughs> yes. And Bush uh-huh. was happy. Everybody was happy. It was uh, they were happy all around. Um, you know, it was weird because, and obviously they weren't able to pull out one like that last weekend against Texas A and M. But you know, it was weird, and and I should have, and I don't have. You know, I don't go into these games thinking, oh my God, we're going to win this, and I don't think we're going to beat Bama. We'll be playing this episode um, tonight on tomorrow morning's Back Talk podcast, not sat down with a good friend of mine, Eric a- Evans, from Roll Bama Roll, and we talked about this game. And I have no I- I- any hope whatsoever that, that the Tennessee Vols are going to win that one. But it was weird when – and you knew that it was going to be a Hail Mary, and Josh Dobbs is not known for his accuracy on long balls and blah, blah, blah. But I just knew. I just knew it was going to happen, and it did, and, and it was awesome. And that Texas A&M game was pretty crazy because Tennessee, I don't know what the deal is with Tennessee. Like, they don't start playing until they're down by 17 points because they were down, like, double digits to, I think, every team they had played but won this year, and that was Ohio, which they still barely beat. And the play that showed me that, like, Tennessee is on some kind of weird roll is the Texas A&M running back was running for the game-clinching touchdown, the second, like, game-clinching touchdown – and the Tennessee guy just poked the ball out at the last minute, and it was a touchback, and they were able yeah. to score. And they went to overtime, and I'm like, they got this. And then they threw the interception. But it's like, they still you, – you got to like Almost that your team, a comeback kind of feel, because I got to watch yeah. the Missouri Tigers get flattened by LSU, just destroyed, demolished. And they're down the – the, the Vols are down like three or four of their best defensive players. Cam Sutton didn't play in that game, and um, J- Jalen Mabin Reeves and um, Jalen Hurd didn't play on offense. And so, you know, they're so banged up, and they're not, even though Butch Jones has done a really good job of improving the talent level, their offensive line is still bad, and they're not particularly deep at some positions. But, boy, that team does not quit. Um, they play right down to the millisecond. And you have to give you have to give the coaching staff a lot of credit for that. And you have to give the players a lot of credit for that, that they do that. I think you have to give Peyton a lot of credit. Cause Shut up. In the um, latest episode of Timeline on NFL Network, they did that thing on Peyton, and he talked to Josh Dobbs. So, clearly, he passed the magic on. But, yeah, yeah, Mike, Alabama, that's the team that Ohio State beat in the playoff like three years ago. That was a total upset with Cardell Jones. I do remember. And Ohio Gotta State will always go down as the first ever national champion of the uh, within the playoff system. Yeah, they weren't it, supposed to get past Oregon. Wasn't it um, Ohio State and Oregon like in the first basketball tournament championship and the first – I'm was not little, sure, but I, I was at yeah, some I, company function, and we were watching the Ohio State Oregon game, and I'm pretty sure Ohio State turned the ball over four times, and they still steamrolled Oregon. <laughs> Poor Marietta, he got hurt in that game, and they just could not stop them. It was a total demolish. Yeah, that, yeah, I was surprised that Ohio State beat Alabama by as much as they did. I mean, that wasn't even. Wasn't even a game, from what I can remember. It's tough to remember, but it's, I think we have to we have to go to the. It's time, Sharona. It's time for hashtag over it or hashtag nah. Let's see how you're doing uh, into the show. Over it or nah, Cheetos. Nah, 
Um, in fact, I because this is a big game, third Saturday in October, baby, I bought two big bags of Cheetos, but I got hungry this this evening, and so one bag is, uh, mm-hmm. I had to break in a bag, uh, but I still have one full bag, and um, you scoff, but the Rally Cheetos work. Rally Cheetos are a thing, and they work. So, uh, I just ran out. Over to Nah, Bama Week. I'm guessing that's a Nah. Nah, no. I mean, it's one of the <laughs> rivalry games are one of the best things about college football. And um, I was so upset several years ago when they were talking about getting rid of this game, and I was like, if they get rid of this game, I'm done with college football because it was a terrible idea. And fortunately, they came to their senses, and um, so yeah. So over it or not, 2016. Over it, completely and utterly <laughs> over it. I can cannot wait for uh, the month of November to be over and the election to be over, and hopefully this country isn't dumb, but we'll see. <laughs> yeah, people have lost money going the other way on that one. Uh, over it or not, the Ryan brothers. Wonder twin power. That's a hard I one. No, 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 I'm re- twins, but. I'm going to reserve answer on this, right? I cannot answer this question because we're only in week six and there's still a lot of football left. So ask me again in like week 10. Uh, I probably won't remember. Over it or not, winning streaks. Can the Tennessee Titans have their first winning streak since 2013? Nah, I mean, I hope so, man. I hope they win this game, you know. Um, They've won – Two games or what? Two and yeah. I mean, um, yeah. I mean, I hope so. All right. Uh, real quick, what's brewing? I haven't done like the budget beers in a while, but if you want to go budget on beers, this time is a good time of year because the Sierra Nevada and Sam Adams Oktoberfest are really good, and they're like twelve bucks for a twelve pack. So go that way. Now, Mike, have you tried the Great Lakes Oktoberfest? Because I have heard that uh, that's a quality brew. Yeah, the Great Lakes Oktoberfest is good. Um, it, it, a really good, uh, yeah, really yeah, good, really good taste. taste. Um, I like the Sam Adams Oktoberfest. I think I, I'm a big fan of Sam Adams beers in general. Um, and then one of the uh, one of the favorites, local favorites at Willoughby Brewing Company, is also back the. I think it's the peanut butter coffee porter. I think I would like peanut that. Peanut butter cup coffee porter. That um, sounds yummy. And that's really good. Really good. So, but yeah, the Oktoberfest are really good. And then uh, in just a little under a month, it'll be uh, Christmas sale time here in Cleveland, which is always a uh, an event. People line up around the around the corner at the brewery to get their hands on their on the on the first batches. Is that the Great Lakes Brewery? Yep. Yeah, the Great Lakes Christmas Ale. Because uh, Jody Smith, who is a uh, gridiron expert, he gets really excited about the St. Arnold's Day and Oktoberfest. He sent me like three years of that one year, and that was, <laughs> hey, it's an it's a pumpkin beer, but it's like a porter. It's very dark. It was, it it uh, exceeds expectations big time. So that was a good one. So yeah, you, you need to know your seasonals. Like uh, you get excited because you know a certain brewery. Like Trader Joe's does, it's from Unibrow, it's a Canadian brewery, but they do their vintage ale, and it's like six bucks a bomber. I have 2014, I have 2015, I might go for my first vertical ever, or 2016 should be coming out shortly, and that'll be delicious. So, yeah, it's a good time of year because the darker beers rule, although they do the coffee, and I'm not a big coffee guy, but, you know. There's, I love coffee. There's types of beer for everybody. I love coffee stouts. They're so good. They're warm in your belly. <laughs> we have a last, uh, ooh, Melvin Gordon up the middle for one yard. What a surprise. Shut up. I love, I love Melvin Gordon. I I had a lot of leagues where I went, like, Gordon in the sixth and Frank Gore in the seventh. And Frank Gore's been, like, a very perfect, like, seventh-round pick. It's like if, if he gets a touchdown, he's good. If he doesn't, he goes for 12 for 60 or 14 for 70. That's just kind of the way it is. But, uh, 12, 60 yeah. touchdown, pretty much what you can count on from Gore every week. If you get it, you get it. It's nice. Yep. Uh, man, it's sad to see. 
I don't know. I, I still – actually, the orange for the Broncos, you know, that's the like orange crush. That's good. But the whole pajama uniform where they wear the same color all the way through, it's just not uh, it's not my thing. I'm not sure anybody, are you a fan of that? Do you like UT going all orange all the way? Yeah, I do. Um, and I actually – like the UT Storm Trooper uniforms. I just I don't like the Titans never win when they wear all white and dear God, let's hope they don't do that this weekend. Well they wore the light blue and white pants last week and it yeah, worked out pretty well. We'll see. They they actually had it lined up to beat the Vikings who have become a really good team in week one. They just had all those turnovers in the third quarter. Otherwise, they, they, they might have pulled off, and that would have been a pretty impressive victory. So, But it's been a pretty darn impressive show. So, Mike, I would say thank you for being around again. Um, tell people yep. where they can find you and all that good stuff, and where will you be during uh, Brown's Apocalypse this weekend? He's going to be outside doing yard work. He's going to be outside doing yard work. Hmm. Um, yeah, 444.com, right here, 444. Uh, you can, everybody, you can follow me on Twitter at Mike underscore Wollert, W-O-E-L-L-E-R-T, team underscore. And uh, hope everybody has a good week. Thanks again, Mike. Sounds awesome. And sure, I know what you're up to. Well, um, your 12 articles and 15 shows and all that usual stuff. <laughs> back talk is back in the morning with this um, audio and again, my talk with Eric Evans of Roll Bama Roll, and we also talk about the Yahoo security breach and secure internet security and the the lawsuit that was filed against Mar- Marissa Mayer at at Yahoo, and so that should be fun. So yeah, follow me on Twitter at Sports by Sharona. Sharon covers all the bases, and she is way more than 100,000 tweets ahead of me. <laughs> and I have 76,000. It's pretty crazy. Uh, I haven't been doing as much fantasy stuff on my site as before, but I did a, an article recently where I tried, like, five different sours, and I've been on a sour kick lately in terms of beer, and it's quite tasty, so I'll be doing that. And I will be in Nashville this weekend, so uh, Titans Browns, uh, for, for better or worse. Uh, hopefully I'll be hanging out with Gunnels, uh, drinking a few beers for the game. Uh, perhaps my mom, maybe she'll get a little white wine. Uh, there you go. That. That's, her, that's her style. So uh, thank you, Mike, for being on the show. Um, Absolutely. I just hope you're not indoctrinating your kids into the religion of the Browns, but, you know, you, you do what you have to. And... Uh, <laughs> Sharona, thanks again for no, only only the winners, only the winners so far. <laughs> Good call. Uh, I hope. It's- I, I told them they're lucky. I, did, I actually did tell them that they're lucky that you know uh, I've got an 11 year old and a 8 year old, and they've already witnessed a championship team in their uh, in their short lives. I had to wait almost 39 years for my first, so they're yeah. already well ahead <laughs> of the game. I was guessing. I was like, oh, you. You kids are so – you kids these days, your iPads and your championships, you don't know what it's like. Yeah. <laughs> so thanks again, Sharona, and I know it's going to be a lot of work uh, editing out all of my uh, audio for the uh, for the segment later. And uh, so thanks, Bye, everybody, ready. for listening, watching. Uh, Donnick are still awake. Um, we'll be drinking together again in a few weeks. So uh, thanks again, and as we like to uh, finish off, Uh, Kiss my grits and I'm out of beer. Welcome back. You're tuned in and listening to Bat Talk with Sharona. I am your host. My name is Sharona. Shout out to Zach Law and Mike Wallert for letting me play last night's going for two interview episode for today's fantasy football segment. Always, always fun to hang out with both those guys, and you should definitely give them a follow. We'll be tweeting out all the information to how to follow everyone who who shows uh, who comes on the show and and. Uh, is so um, awesome to to donate their time to to do that. We're going to take a quick break from our sports talk and play. Would we touched upon 
Yahoo Internet security, security, the um, decision by Yahoo to violate our privacy. If you want to know where I stand on the issue and the, and the two discrimination lawsuits filed by former male employees against Marissa Mayer and, and Yahoo. So that's up next. We'll take a quick break. And then when we come back, uh, my chat with Matt Wood. So stay tuned in. You're listening to Bat Talk with Sharona. All right, welcome back, and uh, welcome to our weekly, um, usually weekly um, segment, Chopping It Up with my friend Matt Wood. And um, if I giggle throughout this, Matt understands why. It's because we had a little bit of fun before we got started. But as promised, this week we're going to talk about Yahoo, their security, I say breach, but it really wasn't a breach, uh, we'll let Matt. Matt has the expertise here. We'll let him um, inform us and educate us about this. And then we're going to talk a little bit, too, about the discrimination lawsuit that has been filed against it as well. And it's interesting a uh, couple of months, series of months, six weeks roughly, for the company. And um, I am really not sure that, uh, you know, that... Um, Marissa Mayer is going to survive. But uh, before we get really get into the meat of the thing, let me get Matt in here and let him reintroduce himself and tell you guys who he is. Hey, guys. Uh, Matt here. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm a software developer. So, um, you know, uh, coding away is pretty much all the fun I do. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh I won't fix your computer, but uh, I will help you uh, understand some of the, you know, technology stuff that you hear in the news because it's it's getting more and more prevalent. Yeah. You know, in you know, uh, and maybe you can learn the right terms instead of calling it the cyber, like uh, Donald Trump does. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> <clears throat> Okay, so um, let's set the background. And I was right and wrong and then right and wrong. And so the two things with Yahoo. And there was a security breach. But there was also internally something kind of unprecedented that was going on. Um, the the hack was um, unprecedented. It as it turns out, the company has been investigated, investigating a hack of over 500 million user accounts. That is an astonishing amount of accounts, um, and the highest. It's a record-setting amount. And then last week... Rutgers, Rut, Rutgers. I'm sorry, Lord. We're gonna struggle. Th- this is gonna be a struggle <laughs> segment because Matt doesn't know this, but you guys know it because we talked about it this morning. We're recording this on Wednesday night, which is our typical night, and I didn't sleep well last night because we finally got around to talking about abuse and Juanita Broderick and Paula Jones and all that situation. So I'm I'm exhausted. But so um it was reported that in addition to that security breach, that hack, um, that Mayer had intentionally hid an initiative by the government from her own security team. She they yep. uh, Yahoo has been under fire for this hack and for some other uh, security breaches that it ha- has had and I believe it was in 2014 they hired a new guy, a very well respected guy in um the security industry and she hid, she and her advisors hid this initiative, this government Instituted. It was instituted on behalf of the U.S. intelligence community, um, and it allowed them to scan the incoming emails of all of Yahoo users. And yep. um, and if you're not troubled by that, you should be. So we'll let Matt come in here and explain all this for us and, and, and help us sort through this. Oh, yeah. So 
you know, let's, so the, there, there's three things that are happening with Yahoo and, and we'll go, kind of go in order with, with which in they broke in the cycle. First was the hack. Second was the government program. And then thirdly is the, uh, alleged, uh, sex discrimination lawsuit levied against Yahoo. Um, uh, from the men saying, hey, they got rid of all the men. Uh, now they're just hiring all the women. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So let's start first with the hack. So the hack was uh, 500 million accounts. And this was back in 2014, I believe. So, <clears throat> I mean, and, th- and they didn't get it, and they didn't say it then. They didn't say, hey, mm-hmm. change your path. We think something may have been going on. No, you waited two years to tell people, oh, there was a hack that, I mean, and I don't know how many of you use Yahoo's uh, mail service. I've used it. Um, you can do a lot of stuff in there. Um, I, mean, I mean, I guess they're all kind of becoming Gmail in a way. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, you have your mail, obviously. You have a calendar. Um, you have like a notepad type thing you can do. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, there's people who tie that email address to other accounts, um, whether it's social media or banking or whatever. I mean, so that's bad. And I mean, um, and let's be real. I mean, some, a lot of people use, they shouldn't, but they, they use the same password for multiple places. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if, 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 you know, you get hacked your email address and your password and if they see like, Oh, Hey, uh, you know, you're already attached to these and use those uh, same passwords. I mean, you you know, someone's been leeching your data in a way for, for two years, possibly. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, very, that's very bad. Like, <laughs> um, why, why they didn't let anybody know, I have no idea. I am, you know, it may be because they were trying to save face. Uh, Yahoo's been the... Uh, you know, the bastard child now. I mean, they used mm-hmm. to be the top of the game in the 90s. They were they were the Google. Yeah. You know, they were the number one search engine. They were the one, they were the uh, the hip <clears throat> company people wanted to work at and be associated with. I remember getting their magazine in the mail, and Cindy Margolis was on it every freaking three issues. Uh, <clears throat> and now it's like they, it, it's it's the whole point of like, hey, we're at the top. Why do we need to innovate? Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously, another company comes along. We can do it faster and better. Mm-hmm. Yeah, whatever. Try it. We're we're number one here, and obviously now they have that. So now Yahoo, the crapper, <clears throat> uh-huh. and now you have this. Yeah, you're 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 not going to go. They're they're probably not <laughs> get any higher than they are. Plus, bits and pieces have been sold off anyway. Yeah, uh, see, that's the thing. That's kind of part of this is that um, the core portion of Yahoo has been sold to Ver- Verizon. Um, well, it's in the process of being sold to, yeah. to Verizon, and and the um, the investigation by um, the um by uh who's let's see here let me get this right um uh, let's see here uh, la, 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 la. okay so there was yeah there there was a september ninth proxy filing with the mm-hmm. securities and exchange commission concerning this verizon deal and it didn't disclose this and there's some disagreement yeah. on whether it should or should not have been because it was ongoing there wasn't you know what how much did they know and what it is is and and all of that but what and um but even beyond that what i think what is concerning for me and we'll be tweeting out links to to the articles that we're looking at and, and relying on yeah um they hired a new chief information security officer in early 2014, and his name is Alex Stamos. Um, Matt probably is familiar with him. Did I pronounce his name correctly? Uh, it sounds right to me. I mean, it's it's spelled just like John Stamos. So yeah. I assume that it's 
um, pronounced that way. So um, when the government approached Yahoo with this classified order to violate its users' privacy, if you want to know where I fall on, which side <laughs> of the fence I fall on on, on this deal, mm. they didn't tell him. They didn't consult him. They didn't discuss with him. And I, to me, that's wrong. I, I, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. I think Marissa Mayer has done a terrible job at Yahoo. Oh, and, yeah. And it, and we're going to yeah, we're going to talk about the discrimination lawsuit here in a minute, but to me that's just inconceivable. Why would you hire a security expert and then not have any discussions with him about this? And I think he resigned, didn't he? Yeah, he he was I mean that that may have been the straw that broke the camel's back. I mean, he um he would also be denied funding for security and and other things where he's like, "Hey, you're trying to you know, you're paying me to make this thing really secure, and then you're you're denying me at every turn. Um, because I mean, this would be a big fight, you know, because you're like saying, "Hey, you're just letting the government go in there without yeah. a warrant. You're just yeah. going to give it to them." Yeah. And plus, we don't know what the hell. I need to see that code. I need to see what this program does. And yeah, interact exactly. Because if you don't, hey, you just open it up. Now, I'm not saying that this. That's like the CEO. That's like the CEO of uh, Apple. When I mean, they got kind of a similar request too, right? And they were to like to re- yeah to uh, make a back door so they could get into the yeah. Thing, you know, so. that would be and, like the CEO there not consulting any of his security and just saying, "Oh, well, okay," you know. Yeah. I mean, it's stupid. It's unprecedentedly dumb. Yeah, and 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 then that's the thing is. You know, the government makes uh, what what type of argument is it? Because um, where you go, I mean, it's like who the hell is going to vote or, you know, try to defend, like, what, you don't want to open a terrorist phone? It's like that's not, like, I guess a straw man in a way, but, like, that's not what the argument is, uh-huh. It you know. And, like, this one was like, oh, hey, we can help, you know. We want to see, like, who's uh, peddling child pornography. That uh-huh. You know, that's, that's the argument they set up against. And it's like... You know, you're going to sit there and try to argue why this is wrong, and the the whole argument against you is what you want child pornographers to have this access, and it's like ah, that's not what the argument is. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the government just went in, went up to a company, hey, just run this. We just want you to scan our email, scan the emails, and send them to us. No warrant, no probable cause. Yeah, nothing. No of the user that they're they're being surveilled. I mean just a bunch of crap i mean <laughs> it's, I mean, it's I, crazy I, I mean folks pr- should really stop using their products um i'm not saying google's better because obviously google has <laughs> they're the ones that get to read all your information and yeah. send you targeted ads and everything yeah they uh, they have their own brand of um vileness I, I i agree i don't use yahoo um, I've got some Yahoo email accounts that I never use anymore. I do use Google for for everything, although I, and I have um, similar concerns, even though it's not really the same. And I mean, mm-hmm. hell, we don't know if if Google is doing this either. You know, right. um, we we found this out. Be, I don't even know how we. Do you know how did we even find out that that Yahoo was doing this? Um, it was, uh, um, I believe it was because of the, uh, all the, uh, um, investigation into the hack. Yeah. It Verizon and everything going, wait, what's this? I mean, it, it, it kind of a way now I'm not saying like Yahoo was setting Verizon up or anything, but, but if Verizon didn't do their due diligence on this, Mm-hmm. And then what Yahoo or whoever can sit there and make the claim after the sale is all said and done. Hey, this was this was this was done two years ago. Mm-hmm. Verizon, why why didn't you tell us? Yeah. Or hey, Verizon, why are you letting the government? You yeah. know. So I mean, I'm not saying that you know that's the intent of Yahoo or anything, but you know, it, it would have been on their hands if yeah. if in you know, deal with this. Yeah. Um, you know, the crazy thing to me, Matt, um, 
it, it will let you make some comments, and then we'll turn to the sexual discrimination thing too. But the crazy thing to me is if it wasn't for them being total F-ups, um, you know, the the breach and all of that, we wouldn't know about it. And then the second part of that is, like we mentioned, Google, what other companies are doing this and we don't know about it. And that the government is has the, the gall and is getting away with going out here and doing this. If you're not concerned about that, my God, you should be. Yeah, and I mean, and so... Um, you know, the, the 20th century and a little bit, or the last half of the 20th century, and I'm and still a majority of this century, you know, the main issue has been civil rights. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that that will still be a thing. Um, but the the uh, other horse that is starting to come into the race is all these uh, privacy concerns yeah. um, and technology and stuff and how we don't have any laws on the books and then you have to have, you know, the Supreme Court has to, you know, interpret these on laws that probably in their spirit and their wording, you know, do not take into account computerized devices. Mm -hmm. um, and, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it's, we're going to start seeing, I mean, you're going to start seeing lawsuits against companies that go back and forth between appeals courts and they're going to be heard at the Supreme Court, and you're going to get stuff that's going to involve the government, and you know, and it, it, it all, it, and it just seems like no matter how many times something is deemed unconstitutional, hey, here's the government right there again with some, mm -hmm. I'm not saying loophole, but blatant disregard of rulings. Blatant disregard, <laughs> you know, blatant disregard for the civil rights and liberties of its citizenry and as you know and it's it's an area where I and I I like Barack Obama on a personal level and and I think he's been overall a good president but his civil rights his tenure um overseeing in the justice department and, and civil rights is horrid it's yeah. absolutely terrible and um, and I don't, in my opinion, history's not going to be kind to him in that regard. Yeah. I mean, and, yeah, I mean, it, it has been the the Supreme Court for the past couple of years going, yeah, you can do this or no, you can't. And it, it has pretty much ruled every sort of program or privacy matter unconstitutional. Mm -hmm. Not every one of them, but most of them. I mean, the whole thing of, like, let's say you have a locked phone. You know, they need a warrant now for you to tell you, hey, uh, put in your PIN number and unlock your phone. Um, they can't just have you open it, <clears throat> mm -hmm. um, which I'm sure that gets skirted around. Like, oh, if you don't open it, we'll go downtown, waste three hours of your life. <clears throat> um, yeah, and if anybody's looking for, like, a, like a encrypted email, like maybe you want to feel safe or something like that. Uh, so if there is something hacked, nobody knows what the hell's in your email. Uh, <laughs> ghost mail and proton mail. Mm -hmm. Both are highly recommended. Um, <clears throat> and remember, just because you use it doesn't mean that you don't, you have nothing to hide. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, I mean that all that comes with its own issues too. The real quick, let's get to this sexual discrimination uh, lawsuit. And I, in preparing for this segment, um, I had not realized before, but this is actually the second. There are two ongoing right yeah. now, and this latest one is by a guy who was fired. He was the former editor in chief, senior editorial director. I'm sorry, his name is Scott Ard. Filed a lawsuit. It is pending right now in California's Northern District Court in San Jose, um, and it alleges federal civil rights um, violations and violations of employment regulations. And um, in looking, you and I have been talking about this for a week or so. And in my latest look at it, um, I was struck by how now I. I have no doubt but that um, Yahoo, when 
Marissa Mayer took over probably wasn't very uh, diverse in terms mm-hmm. of its, you know, um, the the diversity of its gender at um, mm-hmm. a lot of. But when I was looking at the numbers, she did turn those numbers over very quickly. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Incredibly quickly. <clears throat> And um, and I think, you know, I, I'm going to follow this very closely, but, you know, that does raise some questions for me. Oh, yeah. And I'm and obviously, you know, you know, innocent until proven. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, you know, it, it does look a little discriminatory. However, there are a couple of points. Um, so all these firings and stuff were under this new uh, performance review system. Now, uh, it is alleged <clears throat> um, in some other circles, not not uh, in any court filings, <clears throat> that Yahoo obviously was seeking finance, was, was in some dire straits, but obviously if you sit there and lay, you know, 4,000 people off or whatever at one time, obviously your stock price tumbles. Mm-hmm. So, so you have these new performance reviews. And yeah, the, the performance reviews, that's an interesting part of it too. And you uh, you uh, say like, oh, hey, you adjust the standards. You don't meet the standard anymore and you're out the door. Um, and that way you can, you can hide layoffs without, you know, calling them layoffs. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um now, obviously, there's, uh, you know, that's, that's alleged. That's not actually in any suits. Um, <clears throat> and um, there's also, you know, the whole, the whole, the whole, like, <clears throat> as a developer, you know, like, the, the field is predominantly white dude. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, well, and that demographic is changing because, you know, all those you know, white dudes, you know, they, they can, you know, they're retiring and there are issues of ageism in mm-hmm. Silicon Valley um, <clears throat> or like these tech hotspots, not so much everywhere. Um, you know, like if you're past 40, you're considered retired. You're not useful anymore, which is absurd. But <clears throat> so all these dudes, you know, they're, they've been in these positions 20 or 30 years some new blood in mm-hmm. <clears throat> so it just so happens that they're men and it may just be circumstantial that they're men mm-hmm. and yes you know they're being replaced by women or people of color or anything like that so <clears throat> it may seem that way so it, it, it may actually just you know it may be still discrimination but age discrimination and it just happens that they used you know, to have a they used to have a term for it um uh, discriminatory uh, oh I'll have to look it up and uh, I won't waste your time while I'm looking it up but there there is a legal term for that it is almost like uh prima facie negligence and, and that is kind of discriminatory on its face but there's a legal term for it and I can't it's escaping me right now I'm having brain farts today and I'm making up words and doing all kind. by the way the other gentleman who is suing Yahoo his name uh, he was the former Yahoo's autos managing editor Gregory Anderson and mm-hmm. he filed that lawsuit back in February and uh, we will keep an eye on that but you know again it's there's a lot of moving pieces to this and as Matt so rightfully pointed out you know they're um, but the suit alleges that um, uh, there have been more than 50 since 2002, since 2002, since 2012, when Mayer took over, um, that Yahoo had terminated more than 50 employees within a 30-day period, and, and that took place on several different occasions, and that is part of that violation of that provision that allows you it's like doing a layoff without doing a layoff and trying to save money like a money saving tactic and and what have you it's it's got a lot of interesting aspects to it and we'll definitely have to to keep an an eye on things yeah 
I don't know. You know, when I was preparing for this, uh, and, and I jump on Yahoo very frequently, and I'll I'll just say this, you know, from an outsider looking in, and I don't have a dog in this fight, and I love to see um, diversity work in in the right way, and you know, more women getting an opportunity and what have you. Um, and this is neither here nor there, but I will say this as a fantasy football player in Yahoo for a long, long, long time had been the gold standard there for me in terms of its app for playing fantasy football, the website, the interface, and what what have you. But um, there has been a noticeable decline in the um, in the quality and what have you and i jumped on you know just the front page the yahoo front page to me looks outdated and and cluttered and very much amateurish to me well it's it's because it's it's rushed to make it look like everything else um and yeah that it that never works you know instead of going hey we're redesigning let's you know you know, think out what we keep, what we, you know, what we get rid of. You know, it's like, oh, let's just keep everything in, and uh, slap some new paint on it. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, like, <laughs> I mean, Google, I mean, look at Google. It's it's minimalist, you know? Very minimalist, very. I don't like busy websites, yeah. bu- busy web interfaces anyway. And Yahoo is the definition of busy. You look at it, and it's just unsightly and ugly. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's horrible. You know, and, and uh, I, don't have, I don't have an axe to grind. I'm just saying as a consumer, um, it is literally the last website I would go to get anything. Yeah. You know, and I honestly, I only go there for, for fantasy football stuff. That's the only reason why I ever go to Yahoo it is for fantasy football and um you know yeah I used to visit there um but Google has replaced that and has become kind of that you know mm-hmm. that standard and then it's because you can just do a search and get what you want and not have to have that or that I you know that uh, eye sore kind of um you know makes your eyes want to bleed just looking at all the stuff there. Mhm. So. Yeah. It's very, crap. <laughs> yeah, very very interesting stuff. Matt, it's always a pleasure. We um we managed to to really, you know, kind of cover that pretty thoroughly in in 30 minutes. We'll have to come up with something else to talk about next week. Um I'm so I'm almost getting out. We're going to continue to talk about politics. It's it's important. Um the there was a hashtag today that I'll probably end up discussing on Friday. Um basically repeal the 19th. I knew, it. I knew you were going to say it. <laughs> yeah, I mean because you know women are going to make sure Trump doesn't get elected, so let's repeal the 19th. I was evil oh. awful Jezebel women. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's not forget. Like two days ago, too, he said, "Hey, the the uh, the others are going to steal this election from you." Uh, kind of nodding towards uh, uh, the African American and Latino community. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's I, I've not I have it's we, it is crazy. I mean, we're it's mm-hmm. just crazy. Matt, tell everybody out there where they can find you. Uh, you can find me at Twitter at Woodstock. That's W zero zero D S T O K. We'll find something interesting to talk about next week. Matt, have a great evening. Thanks, you too. All right, good night. Good night. You're tuned in and listening to Bat Talk with Sharona. I am your host. My name is Sharona. The moment of truth has arrived. We're going to talk about the big game this weekend. It's the third Saturday in October. 
And I've deliberately chosen some of the music today, all of the music today. Let's be real here, all of the music today. And we are definitely getting the party started early um, around the old home place. Uh, it's going to be a fun game, hopefully. Hopefully the, the Vols will win. I don't, I, you know, I want it to happen. I'm not all that confident about it. But we're about to play my chat with Eric Evans of Roll Bama Roll. Uh, Eric is a friend of mine, and despite being a Bammer, a pretty good guy, and uh, it was fun to sit down with him. So that's up next. So stay tuned in. You're listening to Bat Talk with Sharona. All right. Welcome back to this week's Know Your Enemy segment with my buddy, my boo, Eric Evans of Roll Bama Roll. And um, uh, he is um, unfortunately still lawyering. As you guys know, I'm a recovering lawyer. I no longer lawyer. So, um, but it's always uh, fun to talk to uh, people who are still in the in the business, so to speak. And Eric is a big Alabama fan. And as you guys know, I'm a Tennessee fan. And it is the third Saturday in October upcoming. And so we're going to chit-chat real quick because he's busy. Um, chit-chat real quick about the game and maybe get some sad bills talk at the end. So, Eric, welcome. I think this is the first time we've had a chance to do this. It, it is. It is. Thanks for having me. Then, uh, thanks for doing it. I, I really appreciate it. You're a big Bama fan. Um, tell us how, uh, just real briefly, Mr. Enemy, tell us how you became a Bama fan. Uh, when I was, what, 12 or 13, uh, my stepdad managed state parks and was a chef, so we bounced all oh. throughout, you know, um, Alabama. And then when he decided to purchase a restaurant in Tuscaloosa, I decided I wasn't going to move anywhere else. <laughs> so <laughs> so I'm, I, I stayed there for, you know, college and grad school and then law school before I transferred out. Um, you know, that's where my daughter was born, where I met my ex-wife. I mean, it's it's pretty much home. Yeah. So if, if there's home anywhere, it's in Tuscaloosa. I was born in Troy, although I have no recollection of of any of it. And um, you know, Alabama, we we like to hate. To, listen, Tennessee fans, not just like we love to hate on Alabama, but there are some good people down there. It's, uh, parts of the state are are lovely, just breathtakingly lovely, and it's definitely a bucket list thing for me to go to a game there. I have not yet done that. Um, are you going to be – you're going to be in Knoxville this weekend, right? That's correct. That is, is, correct. This, is this your first game in, in the the beautiful stadium there? Uh, actually, it will be my third in May. Okay. The, last, the last two times I went there, I wound up getting in fights. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we have and no that's... chill, so of course. <laughs> now, do you go full regalia? Do you wear your gear and stuff? You know, I'm not very gumpy. Um, I don't even say roll tide very often. Okay. Well, um, how'd you get in a fight? Just well. Just lucky. I, I guess. Well, you know, you know how the third Saturday is a lot of a lot of anger, anger and beer muscles. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. I do. So, um, all right. So this is know your enemy, and um, Alabama, obviously the cream of the crop in the SEC. Um, it's interesting. I, ha- I sat down and talked to Rita, the NFL chick, and Chels. Chels is right, Gridiron Chels, last night. And we talked a little bit about the SEC and this game. It's a tradition like no other. And one of the great things about college football all th- are these rivalry games. Um, but Alabama, the cream of the crop, it's been a long time since the Vols have beaten them. It's, it's, it, this game's still seen as that kind of rivalry that that we see it? You know, I I think it, it's primarily two things for Alabama fans. One is definitely generational. You know, I'm 41, 42. I'm 42 now? Yeah, I'm 42. And I, you know, I was born in you know, western North Carolina and primarily lived, you know, when I was a little kid, you know, up in north Alabama. Right. So, I mean, if, if you were along that border – or you are a bit older, it is this game. Yeah. This game is the rivalry. And, you know, the players still consider this to be yeah. Alabama's primary rival. Um, I think, you know, people that are, are insular sort of Alabama residents may view it as Auburn simply because it's proximity. Right. But, I mean, it, this game is still the, the thing. And just simply because, you know, 
there's been a streak where Alabama's won the last nine. Mm -hmm. That's not unusual for this rivalry. I mean, Alabama started by winning the first nine. Yeah. And they've lost eight in a row at one point. I mean, so it's just streaky. It's very streaky. And, uh, of course, I remember the – I'm old enough to remember the Mike Shula days and, you know, how Bama was struggling, you know, to find that guy. And, obviously, they found him in Nick Saban, who is an excellent coach. Um, you know, the SEC is interesting in terms of coaching, and I want to get your thoughts on Butch Jones. I want to ask you real quick um, about LSU firing Les Miles, how you feel about that, and where where do you think Les Miles is going to end up? I honestly don't know where he'll end up. I think a good fit for him actually would be Penn State. Yeah. Um, you know, he's a, he's a character guy. Um, the fans would love him. He would restore very you know, traditional power. Mm-hmm. You know, presence to them that would that's been lost through James Franklin. Um and he wouldn't you know, he wouldn't go anywhere. He's a big ten guy. I think he that's a really good fit. Um as far as LSU firing him, I think it's despicable. Yeah. Uh it, you know, he has no L S U coach had more success. He won three S E C titles, a national championship. Mm-hmm. He just had he just had the misfortune that the second half of his L S U career has often, you know, has has you know dovetailed with mm-hmm. you know, a once in a generation and maybe one of the best ever in Nick Saban, mm-hmm. and it's not his fault he's not Nick Saban. Mm-hmm. Like, ten you know, averaging ten wins a year and being in the conversation you know in November is enough. There's so anyone. there's so many fans in teams who would kill to have the kind of success that Les Miles had at LSU, and even if you think that they mishandled this from day one, even going back into last season and how it went down. And, um, you know, it's interesting. I've never been a James Franklin fan, and so uh, I could see that. Brian uh, Brian Kelly is going to get fired at Notre Dame at some point. Will Muschamp, we know his he, he's in his first year. He's going to get at least another year or two, but he's not going to, in my opinion, prosper at South Carolina. It's going to be interesting. So the game itself – this is a Know Your Enemy segment. Give me your top three things that Tennessee could do to possibly win this game. And let me just give you this disclaimer. I have zero hope that we're going to. But it, what are the three things they could do to possibly do it? Well, there's been a central theme in practically every Alabama loss since 2008. And that's something that's um, – is particularly vulnerable this year with a new defensive scheme and a new secondary coach as well. Mm-hmm. And that's vertical passing. Mm-hmm. Um, Josh Dobbs is not the most accurate guy mm-hmm. on earth, but you know if he can get a little time and especially hit guys like Malone, you know, who's just a size matchup for you know, he's a nightmare for most players. Um, I think Tennessee can have some success and actually will probably hit a few um, pretty pretty deep ones, uh, particularly. If, on um, Marlon Humphrey, who's you know, not having his best season. Uh, so obviously vertical passing is the first thing. Uh, two, and this is where I think Tennessee actually does have you know, a true matchup superiority is in special teams, mm-hmm. particularly, in, particularly in the return game. Um, you know, I think Tennessee can you know, flip the field and maybe you know, get a cheap score um, with the return game. And we saw it last year. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's going to have to be something that Alabama is going to need to work on. Um, you know, the punt return isn't quite as good as it is last season, but you know, overall, and Aaron Medley's actually bounced back from you know, a pretty disappointing campaign last season. You know, he's you know, back up to 75%-ish, somewhere through there, on field goals. And, and I, I think Tennessee's going to have some success there. And the last one is going to be... Um, rushing the passer, mm-hmm. uh, Derek Barnett's you know, fantastic. Yeah. The question is whether he can get some more time. Um, you know, he can get some more help. Um, yeah. he, he, he's going. Tennessee's he's going to wreck pretty, things. Tennessee's pretty banged up on defense and um, in other positions as well. And uh, I agree. I really, I'm a big fan of Derek Barnett. That you know, in terms of draftability, there's some. Um, disagreement there uh, on the flip side what are the three things that Bama must do in order to win this game 
Alabama, and this is where I think the game is going to be won by the Tide, um, have to control both lines of scrimmage. Mm -hmm. Um, I I think that, you know, Tennessee's problem all season, and it was a problem going into fall camp, and everyone knew it was a problem in spring, is the offensive line. It's been a problem Um, for years now, which is it used to be such a strength of the team and it's been a problem going back to the Derek Dooley days, and it's it's awful. Yeah, and Josh Dobbs has spent a lot of time turtling and running for his life. <laughs> uh, this this is going to be the best you know pass rush he's seen all season. Yeah. You know, as, as far as you know, one through four. Is um, Alabama's you know, is Alabama's front line? Or do you think they they're the best in college football? I do think they're the best yeah, in college I football. Too. I do too. Um, you know, I, I think obviously, you know, Deshaun Hall and Miles Garrett might be the best tandem, but you know, the offensive line doesn't get a week off. But you know, they go from those guys to you know, Alabama's defensive line, mm-hmm. and so Alabama's going to have to win, you know, the line of scrimmage, and I, you know, I think they will. Um, you know, obviously, run the ball. Mm-hmm. You know, both both teams may come out of the shotgun, and the game may be played a little bit faster. But at the end of the day, this is going to be just an old-fashioned pound-the-ground mm-hmm. SEC game because, obviously, Tennessee is going to want to get, you know, Kamara, who I think, obviously, is the best back on you mm-hmm. know, on the Volunteers. He actually should be starting anyway. And Hurd and Kelly, get those guys. That, that's a really big debate here, um, the Jalen Hurd, Alvin Kamara thing. Um, I, I like Jalen Hurd. For me, though, I have always said – I didn't understand why they didn't just use him as a flex guy, kind of guy, kind of like a Randall Cobb, get him more involved in the pass. He To me, he looks more like a wide receiver, always has. Well, I mean, I think it's pretty apparent. I mean, you look at the way, you know, Alvin Kamara or, you know, Kelly hit the hole mm-hmm. and, you know, get north-south and get the pad level square. You know, it, mm-hmm. it, they're, they're just better, pure running backs. Mm-hmm. Jalen Hurd, you know, tends to – to dance a little east-west, you know, mm-hmm. trying to find a hole. And I, I think it's a risk, you know, reward with that guy. Whereas, you know, you know what you're getting with the other two. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would agree with that. Uh, it's always an unfair question I have to ask you. Give me your – do you want to give me a score prediction? And Obviously, you think the, that Bama is going to win, and, and, and I think that, that Bama is the better team. Do you want to give me a score prediction? You know, a, on paper, it's Alabama is you know, better than you know, Tennessee by you know, leaps and bounds. Yeah. But for the first time in you know, many years, probably since Phil Fulmer, um, the balls have at least one through 22 you know, elite SEC starters. Mm-hmm. And they love and respect Flips Jones, they love and respect Tennessee's tradition, and they play hard all 60 minutes. Mm-hmm. And it's just really hard to, you know, pin a score on a team that doesn't get his head down. Yeah. Um, Butch Jones looks like he's finally grown into his role as an SEC coach. I would agree yeah. with that. I, 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 I would agree with that. I mean, so I, I think it's going to be a lot of, of – you know, ground game. I don't think there are going to be very many turnovers, and I think it's going to be just a you know a, a molly whopper. Yeah. Uh, probably somewhere like twenty four thirteen. Yeah, I I said last night on a podcast that I did that the for me the the key for the Vols win is not to obviously not to make mistakes, and they can't turn the ball over. They simply cannot turn the ball over. Josh Dobbs has to be protective of the football, and I'm glad that you brought up Butch Jones because I was going to ask you, as an outsider looking in, what, what you thought about the job that he was doing. Uh, he's obviously you know, established the talent base again. Uh, he's a fantastic recruiter, mm-hmm. and you know, like I said, his in-game management is just night and day mm-hmm. different than it was last year. And Much better. It, Much better. He's, yeah, he's, he's grown into a coach. That said, um, I think he still needs to work on, you know, getting more consistent efforts out of the players and you know, getting their heads in the game because the turnover situation is unacceptable. 
I mean, if Josh Dobbs turns the ball over three, four, five times, this game's going to be an absolute Oh, wild. I agree with that. Yeah, nobody can turn the ball over. They have, you know, and we could talk about um, some of the rules regarding that. Real quick, I want to ask you, because it's been a topic of conversation, the LSU Florida brouhaha regarding the postponement slash cancellation of the game. We still aren't really sure what's going to happen there. Probably not going to be made up. What do you make of all of that? Well, I mean, I think the SEC needs to get in and you know send them both to their room. This game has to be played. Has there's to be simply played. there's it, it's not just a matter of so much money at stake. I mean, who do you know goes to the Peach Bowl, for instance? Yeah. Um, you know, it's not just about bowl positioning and money, you know, but that also impacts the other 12 members. Mm -hmm. It's more a matter of who goes to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Um, SB Nation did a cover story on that yesterday, and according to the S&P projection, there's a 20% chance that if the season plays out where the better team on S&P projection wins, that Florida will pass Tennessee. It's ridiculous. Um, despite losing head to head, if and they, that's that's, un, that's unacceptable. If they don't make it up, don't you think that they have to make that automatically a loss for both of those teams? I, I think that's the only way to do it. That's the only fair way to do it. Um, you know, it, you give them both a forfeit yeah. and, and go on. Yeah. You know, it's zero zero tie forfeit. Yeah. Um, but you know, like I said, there's too much money, and particularly. Yeah, you know, there are other things just beside the teams. I mean, there are coaching contracts yeah. involved. Yeah, uh, there's it's so just, much. It's just ridiculous. It, it, it's absolutely ridiculous. I, I'm very curious to see what happens there as well. Uh, how do you see the SEC, uh, you know, kind of uh, panning out? Obviously, you know, in, in the West. <coughs> in the West, we know who it's going to be, <laughs> right? But what about the East? How do you see the East coming out? Well, I don't. I don't know that it's a it's it's a done deal that Alabama comes out of the West. I mean, I'd like to think they are, and I think they are the best the best team. But you know, you've got a four game stretch where you know, they face four ranked teams, and two of them are top ten teams, yeah. and two of those are on the road. Yeah. And you know, it, there's not a there's not a week off. I mean, after Alabama plays this, they've got to play Texas A and M. Yeah, Texas A and M. You know, you got to give it to Kev, Kevin Sumlin. He's doing a good job there. Yeah, um, yeah. It, it, they finally have a complete team. They can run the ball. You know, the defense is, you know, definitely improved. And, you know, they they make teams pay for mistakes. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's going to be a tough game too. But you know, so let's just say it's going to be Alabama or Texas A and M probably. Um, I still think Tennessee comes out of the out of the East. I don't think that this is the first. I mean, this is the only time that Alabama and the Vols will play this season. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, who who else is going to win? Yeah. I mean, do you do you trust Florida's offense to be consistent? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, it's Florida's an, an interesting team. I think that um, Jim McElwain has done a, a good job there. I wasn't that familiar with him. In fact, not really familiar at all with him. But it's um, he's. I think there's still another year or two away from really being competitive. Um, you you mentioned. Yeah, you know, that Alabama still, you know, I mean, Ole Miss. Look, look at what Ole Miss is doing. They're, you know, they're a pretty good football team. That's a fantastic football team. Um, you know, when they can actually play for 60 minutes, it's terrifying. It's, you know, become one of the scariest games on the schedule yeah. for for yeah. Alabama. Yeah. Yeah. Are there any other games besides the 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 Alabama Tennessee game that you're looking forward to this weekend? Um, to be honest, I'm pretty much just dialed into this. I mean, I live 51 weeks a year to hate them all just for this week. <laughs> all right, so so real quick, let me ask you. I know that you're a Bills fan, and being being a Bills fan is like being a Browns or a, a Lions fan or maybe even a Titans fan. Uh, how are you feeling about them this year? I think it's a very illusory 3-2 and two record. And I think they'll move to an even more illusory four and two if they beat San Francisco. They should this week. beat San Francisco. Yeah, and they should. Um, but Rex Ryan is such a buffoon. Um, <laughs> I was just getting ready to ask you about the Ryan brothers. 
yeah. <laughs> absolute buffoons. Yeah. You know, they come in with defensive pedigrees and with all that talent on the defensive line and then register literally the worst sack number in the NFL last season. Yeah. And, you know, we just can't stay healthy either. I mean, it's, it's take your pick on whether it's losing, you know, star wide receiver, young, promising defensive talent, you know, with the front seven. I just, you know, injuries catch up, and I think you know, the Bills are probably going to finish somewhere around nine and seven. And for the 17th straight year, miss the playoffs. Yeah. <laughs> but that's. Yeah. What about Tyrod Taylor? How do you feel about him? Well, big fan of Ty God. I never thought he would be able to get it done. Yeah. Uh, you know, but he's he's one of these guys like Dak. Yeah. That, you know, he he comes in and he just plays better with you know sort of NFL development. Mm-hmm. Uh, Taylor always had you know the physical skills. Mm-hmm. It was it was a matter of you know trying to put it together. But when you got you know. Shane Beamer and Scott Leffler are trying to coach you up you know, <laughs> to be a competent quarterback. That's not going to work either. Yeah, yeah, but I like him too. I'm I'm a big fan too. And you know they've, uh, despite not having you know Sammy Watkins has never been healthy and he doesn't really have. He's got a good running game, but other than that, you know I like Charles Clay. I think he's a nice tight end, but you know he's really done a lot with what he's had. Yeah, he he really has, and um, you know he runs smart. Yeah, I mean, he's big. He's big enough to run well, but he runs smart. Um, yeah, obviously, I think we'd like to see more zone read with him. I mean, he's really dangerous with his legs. But you know, like you said, yeah, with very few weapons, Sammy Watkins. I, before the season, I was like, yeah, he's got to stay healthy again, yeah. and of course, he didn't. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, 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 at some point, you know. You, you've got to cut bait with him. Yeah. Uh, it's a lot of money yeah. on the table yeah. for a guy who hasn't looked up to it. Yeah. Uh, and it's really not, not through his own fault either. Yeah. No, uh, I, I completely agree with that. You mentioned Zach, and we talked about this last night. Just real quick, should Tony Romo get his job back or not? Absolutely not. I agree, I agree. How can you? Uh, you you can't. Um you know, they say that you didn't lose, that you don't lose your job with an injury. Well, you know, ask Bledsoe about that. Yeah. You know, and Bledsoe was having a fantastic career in New England. Mm-hmm. Um, it, at the end of the day, you know, it's not just 16 games. It's a multi-billion dollar franchise. Um, it's a business, an entertainment business. And you put the product out there that gives you the most revenue, mm-hmm. the most exposure, and that is that. Yeah, no, I com- I completely and utterly agree with that. Eric, it was such a pleasure. I know you're busy. Tell everybody out there about Roll Bama Roll and where they can find it, find you, find whatever you want to find out there on social media. Uh, it's just RollBamaRoll.com. It's SB Nation's um, Alabama site. We've actually done it for 10 years now. Um, oh, congratulations. It's, 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 yeah, it's, it's been pretty, pretty fantastic. Um and, you know, it's obviously available on Facebook, you know, Flash, Roll Bama Roll, and then on Twitter, at Roll Bama Roll. All in word. All right. Well, it was fun. Let's do it again soon. All right. Thank you. You take right. care. Go Vols. Roll Tide. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. Well, personally, I think I should have called that song Little Pigeon, took a big dump on his head and flew to Rocky Top. What do you think? <laughs> All right, that was so much fun. Shout out to Eric Evans for joining me in that segment. To talk about the big game, it is going to be um, hopefully a lot of fun. I'm very excited. That's it for today. Oh, by the way, LSU, we recorded that yesterday. Excuse me, LSU in Florida have announced they're going to reschedule that. November 19th in Baton Rouge, it's a great decision, uh, the right decision. Thank you for tuning in. You've been listening to Bat Talk with Sharona. Shout out to Matt Wood, Zach Law, Mike Wallard, and Eric Evans for joining me today. Have a wonderful weekend, and we'll be back next week with probably two 
to um, podcast. You can follow me on Twitter for information about that. Check out my website, Back Talk with Sharona. Check out my work at Inside the Pylon, NFL Female and Pro Player Insiders. Again, have a wonderful weekend, and go Vols.